Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, metabolicdoc.com and anabolicdoc.com. Also where you can buy his book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, also available on amazon.com. Dr. O'Connor, how are you today, sir? Excellent, excellent, Ron. Another big week, enjoying summer up here, just so much stuff going on, trying to keep the eyes open. What is going on with practice number two down in Florida? Florida's doing great. We're going back down. You know, we've eased in. The place has opened up. We're going back down to see patients for in July 12th yep. and July 13th. There's different bookings, like some of the slots. You know, I see, I spend about an hour and a half with each new patient. Yep. So I don't know what's open right now, but we got two, I think three guys coming in. And we have, I have patients that are my existing patients that are just coming in to say hello. So, it, we're going out with some art dealers in the night. We, I can't say who. We're going. <laughs> we got art dealers. We got some guy with like the pri the, the the yachts and like you know the, the private jets okay. taking us out. Like they're all patients of mine. Sure. What else? We have the art dealer. Um, we just have other people we're going out with. Some guy owns in, in South Florida, in Miami, some huge restaurant that we're taking. So the team, you know, we're gonna go out and we're looking for like a place to live. Because we're living out of hotels when we go down there. Right. So we leave the poodles at home. You know, we leave the poodles up here, up in Connecticut. But it's just fun, Rob. We're, Rob, we're having a goddamn blast. I'm so happy I did this. Awesome. And uh, a lot of your patients who are from that general area who used to have to go all the way up to Hartford, Connecticut, they're loving so this. From, so this is why we did it. So many patients. I have so many guys in Florida. Hmm. And, and, and from Georgia down and from Easton, was the, you know, from, from over Kentucky and even Texas over. So all those guys, it's, it's dog, it ain't hard to get you, me to come in to get a ticket to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. No one wants to run. No one wants to come out to Hartford. Yeah, I mean, Hartford, sorry. What's, what's in Hartford? And you know the funny thing is, I know, I mean, it's like, I, it's not bad around here, but it's like, it's pretty dreary in the winter, but it's going to be not hard to get him down, obviously, to Fort Lauderdale in the, in, the, in the winter. The price to go into Fort Lauderdale on Spirit or JetBlue is like 80 bucks one way. Yeah. Uh, versus 700 or 300 round trip to Hartford, Connecticut. So right there, it's, I, it's a no-brainer. I need to warn people about Spirit Airlines, doctor, because... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> You know, hopefully I don't get sued by Spirit, but they do have lower flight prices. But then yeah. they you pay out the ass for like a, a true. Car, it, it's like eighty bucks for a carry on. There's no true. It is true. Yeah, you don't you pay for every little thing. So and have you seen the Ron? Have you seen we we do JetBlue and Spirit like three, we go back three dollars per peanut. Yeah, it's rough. You know what, Ron? Did you see this? The 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 the, the chairs. They're like skeleton chairs, and they're this big. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm five foot nine, about 195 pounds, and I feel like I'm like this big strong man. Like I can't even. So if you're, so, so you, you got to pay for it. You know what I mean? And if you're next to a, a morbidly obese person, I hope you got a Not short good. flight. Yeah, I've had some of those flights. So uh, last two shows we've been covering. Uh, we had Fakri Mubarak. Then last time we talked mostly about my heart test. So. We're a little backed up with questions, and these guys have been itching to get their questions answered. So uh, we're going to kick things off with a question from me, Ron Harris. So <laughs> Let's go. This is actually my wife was very concerned, and so she forced me to, to uh, ask you. She goes, ask that doctor guy. So there are a lot of high-potency underground steroids around with items like T400, which is supposedly 400 milligram per milliliter testosterone, and then you have 300 or for even 400 mg per mil deca, things like that. They're all loaded with benzyl alcohol, incredibly painful shots. Yeah. The, the pain sometimes is like 12 days. So beyond the crippling soreness that can linger uh, for many days post-injection, do you know of any dangers associated with regularly injecting large amounts of benzyl alcohol into your body? This is a great, This what a great random question this is from the wife. This is great. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the trend cough. Yeah. Because when you inject even testosterone, even some of the testosterone injections can cause a little bit of a tickle cough, right? Yeah. Even, but trend, and we never know, like if you read my article on trend, I thought trend cough turned out to be not just benzyl alcohol derivative, but because it probably isn't because all the other steroids have it. Right. So it turned out to be that it, it caused, it increased uh, Brady, it, re, it decreased Brady kinin 
And it, it, it's like an eight, if you look at ACE inhibitors, lisinopril, yeah. and if you look for how those cause a cough, you know, years ago when I, when I was writing for steroidology.com, yeah. you know, I'm a whore. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a whore. I just write for all over the world. Oh, so, your knowledge. Well, I guess freelance writing. Yeah. So I, he said, Doc, you got to put together something good because this is like, you got to do an article on trend cough. So if you go on my website, I did, I really did a lot of research, really all, I took a few weeks and I even talked to a lot of, you know, bro scientists, really guru guys, and uh, I compiled what I thought was the cool thing and that was what I came down to and in the end, um, trend itself is just not broken down and it ends up, there's there's a compound, a, a metabolite that definitely just gets into the bronchioles and just causes like massive constriction, but I remember reading about it that a lot of people if you just ask them like a bro science guy because we know doctors don't know anything they don't even know what these drugs are right. so if you ask if you ask a, an expert like a bro science guy who's like a real you know very you know well respected um science guy anyway he'll say oh it's benzoyl alcohol hmm. so i don't honestly that's a carrier that's in these things to a slight degree my i would have to respond for the one of the first and only times i really don't know hmm. i don't know what do you think I don't know either. I mean, I I don't feel uh, any deleterious effects. But you know, my wife, no. my wife, she's always concerned. You know, she loves me. She doesn't want me to kill myself with a bad shot or something. So you know, I actually stopped. I I, I had a couple bottles of it, and I'm like, I'm not using this because the pain is just too bad. But I'm wondering, from a health point of view, if putting that much benzoyl alcohol into your body is bad well. First of all, how do but but so you're right though. So remember we talked about the chemical limitations and concentrating how much testosterone ester you can get in one milliliter. Remember that? Yeah, and I don't so, think it's possible to put 400. So actually, here's a question for the community, for our for our supporters and for our fans that are watching. Yeah. Is there anyone that's a chemist that can answer this question, that can tell us, number one, about this question and how much benzoyl alcohol is there and, there, and what studies show that injecting it you know, there's all sorts of studies where they've injected everything into people and monkeys. Yeah. So I, I would think, so that answer that question, if they could help us with that, a, a real pharmacist, sure. like a farm PhD or a PhD or a chemist or some biochemist, someone who's in the industry would be great. Um, and then number two, like w what else can, and how do they concentrate, how much concentration can you get? I mean, we should, we should blow up on that one because guys, I'd love to hear, why is it testosterone 100 propanate 200, 200 cyponate and anthate, yeah. sussin on 250, and then only in the underground you get testosterone 3 and 400. Well, I think I, I think I can answer the propionate is water based, right? So no, 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 no. Oil based. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Damn it, I'm dumber than I thought. Anyway, uh, well, prop so, is oil based, Ron. So we need, this we need further, in, and further information is needed, but uh, I do want to say one thing about the trend cough because. This this under these underground products are so unreliable that a lot of times they're actually labeled as the wrong drugs. They'll True. label and uh, I had a bottle of one. It was supposed to be primabolin and anthate. Primabolin is very expensive compared to like testosterone or trend. It's usually it should be about double the price on the black market. Um, so I had this primabolin and I every time I shot it, I had that violent trend cough until I finally figured out. <laughs> This isn't prima ball, and this is trend. Wow. And that's, you know, for me, it's not so bad because I'm a dude, but uh, prima ball one is one of the few things that women will use because yeah. it's, it's gentler in terms of the, the masculinization effects that they see. So I, I'm sure a lot of women were injecting that prima ball, in, and it was actually trend. So, yeah. And that's the whole thing, Ron. Like, like Anavar is not Anavar, it's D ball, super draw, right? Right. Right. Because it's it's expensive to make. This is why, in the end of the day, I'm not saying that this should happen. I'm not supporting this. But in the end of the day, if we're a civilized society, th there has to be some kind of regulation on this stuff. Has to, I mean, well, it's it's underground. It's it's black market. So, yeah. How much death is there, and how much? I mean, again, I saw some. This last week has been a tough week. I saw a bad, very bad case. I don't even want to talk about uh, cardiac. All cardiac related. Twenty four year old man cardiac. Oh. You, you know, Ron. It's just we we gotta we gotta have guys go to doctors. They have to know what they're in for. They should get baseline checks to see, you know, their family histories and their heart health. The stuff that you did, yeah. you're doing, and you're doing okay. Yeah. Oh, I just, uh, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but I was looking at an Instagram of a, she's not a bodybuilder, is she women's physique? She's some buff chick who's super hot, and she just posted that her, 
her seventh ex-boyfriend just died. And she posted his picture, and it said heart failure. And this guy looked like he was 35 at, at the oldest. Bob, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's always but the lot. So the last thing with the benzoyl alcohol, you know, so the only side effect that I know is, it's, is as you know, it's that's aqueous and that's a charged molecule. So when you're injected, that's super painful. Oh, man. Ooh. Like suspension, like testosterone suspension, Ron, that's aqueous. Yeah. Like, but no one uses suspension, really. I mean, do people use suspension still? Uh, not very much, very often. I, I hear people, every once in a great while, someone will ask around for, like, do you know where I can get some suspension? Like, suspension? <laughs> <laughs> what is this, 1985? What are you doing? It's funny. Yeah. Anyway, all right, well, we need to get to some questions. Swami has been waiting two, two weeks for this. So here we go, Swami. Swami says, I like trying to challenge the doc. Doc, no word soup out of you. Need a straight answer without a lengthy explanation. Just kidding. I understand everyone is unique and needs individual attention based on a huge amount of factors, including genetics, drug use, diet, age, etc. But play along here. Assume you're treating average Joe. He's 40 plus, diagnosed with legit low T for whatever reason. He's not one of the outliers. Think bell curve here. 10% non-responders, 10% over-responders, 80% average Joe. Average Joe is looking for the basic benefits of TRT. Sex drive, some muscle, less fat, etc. At the same time, average Joe wants to protect his long-term health, uh, longevity. What is a general generic Dr. Tom O'Connor TRT weekly protocol. What we all want to know is the general dosage administration weekly of test, HCG, AI, anything else, and then give me three OTC supplements you consider mandatory for average Joe. This is beautiful. Okay, no word soup. Here we go. <laughs> what do you got average Joe? What's average Joe doing? Yeah. Okay, average Joe with a – I mean, this guy's word soup. I, I like this guy. Word soup. You know, with the with the forty with the with the uh, the eighty percent and the ten, I have to get my head around all this stuff. Non-responding, this is great stuff, Swami. It is good stuff, buddy. Okay, here's the deal: TRT dose, hundred milligrams every five every five days. Half a mil testosterone sipinate, zero point five mil milligrams. Mil, <laughs> it's a long day. Half a half a mil of sipinate. Usually or enanthate, they're the same, 200 milligrams per mil concentration. Yeah. Intermuscularly taken every five to six days. Th that keeps the levels pretty high. It doesn't do this, you know. It's it's not the one cc every two weeks or a month that, unfortunately, doctors are doing because they really don't. And then those, that's the TRT protocol, Swami. And then, and then you, know, you know my secrets are there's no secrets. Yeah. I work around all the other man's individual medical issues. So someone like Ron, Ron, you're you're you're, you're already taken care of because it's cardiac, right? Right. Yeah. So so I go for the cardiac stuff, Swami. I don't I I don't get crazy. You go for the cardiac stuff. That that's gonna let's see, um, you you over the, what's it? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Average Joe protect his long term health. If you if you don't want to anti age, start off with not having a heart attack. Mm. It's the same old stuff with me. So yeah. so if you. <laughs> So every man comes in, gets a detailed history, physical exam, a very complicated look at all the metabolic stuff, the lipids, you know, the A1C, the prostate, and then I build them all back man per man. There's not two freaking guys that are ever the same. Yeah. It's never the – I'm not – it's not a McDonald's place in here. So, so Swami, that's – I know I'm getting into word soup again. No. Half a mil, a little bit of testosterone. I have guys that are doing – so typically more – a little more or a little less, about about half a mil every five to seven days. And then, okay, the, the blocking drugs. If you're a young man and you want to maintain fertility, we are going to use at some point some HCG. Hmm. There you go. I, aromatase inhibitor, Swami, I don't use them generally. But, but hold on, I do use some of them. If you have a guy that has, he's a, he's a aromatase, he's a converter. Yeah, he's maybe heavier, and again, steroid use is already gone. This is already in way in the past. He's already most guys have come in either on T, they're on their own stuff, or their doctor's giving it from anti aging or from the clinic, and they just want me because they they want me. They want they want the guy. They want the anabolic metabolic. They don't want they want to be under my care, which is great. I'm, I'm I say this is just what I, I just love it. It's yeah. a man's club. It's a man's club. <laughs> so. And I watch the hearts and the sex and this and that and it's so this is it's it's I would I do the same thing every day. So in the end, 
I get the T straight as best I can. And then if it's a 40 something year old guy and older and he's already done with children, yeah. you don't need to use HCG. I mean, the data, the bro science guys agree with me. The doctors that know that fertility urologists agree with me. If you use HCG too much, you're just going to shut your balls down further. And the truth is, when you're on testosterone, bye bye balls. Damn it. <laughs> LeBron, do you agree with me? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why anybody who's already have kids or doesn't care about having kids, why would they be on HCG? Listen to me, Ron. Listen to this. They do it because they don't know, because the anti aging in the groups, and again, I'm, I don't care about politics. They, they just, that's what they're given, that's what they're told, or that's just what they take from the underground. Mm. No, no, no endocrinologist or doctor down the road is going to give all this garbage together. They just, there's no, there's no protocols for it. These are underground, I'm not saying that protocols don't effing work. Yeah. I'm saying, let's look at the individual efficacy of the protocol. Testosterone, you're on testosterone. Right. Great. Next, why would you do HCG and what are the doses? You're trying to maintain fertility. Are you doing it to maintain your balls? It's not going to work, pal, Damn. but it will. Hold on. Some men, there are some men that run on TRT and little two or three hits per week of, t of HCG. I do pay homage. It will work to maintain some men's testicles. Hmm. It, it will, but you know what? After doing this for 10 years now, and seeing thousands of men, uh, the number of men at the end of the day after five years that are that are able to keep doing that, because yeah. who the hell is going to keep doing the injections like a pincushion? You know what the number is? Less than 5%. Wow. So, so you can do it. For guys that are very OCD and they're very ba 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 go ahead, go nuts. But the truth is, when you do it longer and longer and longer, and I see all the, I, I have been doing this for over 10 years. At a certain point, it doesn't even work anymore, and their balls shrink anyway. Hmm. So, and then they go to your so so you don't need balls, right? I mean, to have I'm telling you the truth. You don't. Why, I, why? Why do they? They must tell you these guys that are they're doing it. Why are they so concerned? Are they trying to maintain the size of their balls? Like so. Listen, like this is a, this, or? this is the best show. This is the best, Swami. You, this is word soup, Swami. But there's no. We have no choice. Yeah, sorry. Because Ron and I are just. We have to be word soupish. So. The guys just want it because, Jock, it's just what you do. It's what you do. And I go, okay. And I give them time and I talk about it. So what are you looking to do, sir? You're looking to have kids? Well, that's legitimate, doing 200 to 400, you know, with T during the – that does work. I have had seen dozens of men have maintained fertility on testosterone because they're doing small intermittent hits. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. So if you're young, you, your testosterone is low, and you're on TRT, and you want to maintain fertility, HCG all day long, I use it. It doesn't always work forever, but in the end of the day, I lower T or I take T off, and I blast HCG. Hmm. And I don't even need H H HMG. I don't need, I don't need Brevel or Overdrill, which are very expensive derivatives of LA. That's beyond the scope of this question. Hmm. But I've seen it used. It's just you don't need it. Because everyone get everyone's everyone all the ninety nine percent of the guys we just have kids with HCG a little bit or a lot bit so if to, to maintain your testicles sure the truth is in the end of the guys have told me I'm the experienced I'm the anabolic doc I sat here eating popcorn for the first five years going <laughs> really I was just eating I was sitting back just having popcorn just going well, these guys are nuts. Oh my God! Oh my Lord! Really? Yeah. So HCG doesn't work? No, Doc. It's useless. You keep blasting it. Your balls get smaller and smaller. Now, I'm not saying that's for every man, but I'll tell you most because the truth is, there's no study. On it. We have no study on it. We have no study. The truth probably is, then hmm. maybe they don't keep doing it because Ron, who for ten years straight, except for some guy who's very OCD, yeah. can can consistently inject human chorionic gonadotropin into his belly or his thigh every other day for 10 straight years. Well, I mean, I know guys who've been doing that with GH every day for 10 or 20 years, so. Okay. These, so, are, these are different. These are the OCD people. I that, know it. Ron, so that's a good point. So for the OCD guys, yeah. I say, okay, I, I don't, first of all, I, you don't have to twist my arm. You're on testosterone. I don't mind giving guys it, 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 a little bit of a, a CG to go with it. There's no laws being broken. Right. I just, but then we then we go to the data. 
if you read the data, it does show that if you run HCG with or without testosterone too long on certain men, you're going to downregulate and shut down the Leydig and Serotoli cells. Now that's for you. So that that that's for you, Swami. So, okay. but then, so so test and HCG. Yes, those are the other agents that you use fertility and or for the for maintaining the, the atrophy of the testicle. And some men. Here's another big secret. Some men love to go on and off and living on HCG because they like to have a better spur, a better ejaculate load. I was gonna say, you know, porn. We all watch porn, and uh, yeah, if that's gonna keep you, uh, you know, shooting these giant loads, and you can feel like a hero. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Yeah. So this is a this is a man show. This is a man. This is I'm a men's health guy only. Sure. So let, let me tell you right now. So so it's just a beautiful thing here. Yeah. So it's but they so they do it and they chase it and it works and then again the body shuts down and then the ejaculate goes the other way and they have to go on. They cycle it. They cycle HCG for that. Boy. Hey, Ron, so Ron, what you're the, you're my kind of guy. Yeah. You're my kind of guy. Yeah. You're forty some years old. Forty. Shut it down, man. You go on testosterone, keep the dose perfect so you feel great, sex is great, you got some good muscle, your heart's good. What's what, That's called, that's what I do. This is my life. So aromatase inhibitors, Swami. <clears throat> I mean, Jesus Christ, aromatase inhibitors, the, these things tank your high debt, your HDL. Yeah. We, we're not going to go into the heart again. I'm going to stay away from it for this question anyway because we have another good question. Sure. Okay. Who would want to take a medicine that we know is potentially cardiac toxic? And are you balancing your estrogen? Again, I use little doses of H of Arimidex, and, and not electrosol, but Arimidex for patients that I feel their heart's healthy, their HDL is strong, it's, it's robust. We could balance a little. They're on a low dose of test, and then yes, we can balance a little bit of the estrogen androgen. I do agree. Yeah. I do agree. I can do it. But again, most men don't, when you're on just basic doses of test, now there's a reason for taking small intermittent hits of testosterone. I have a lot more guys right now, which is nothing illegal about it. They're taking teeny doses of testosterone with a 27 gauge insulin syringe into their thigh, intermuscularly, every other day. Testosterone 700 to 1,000. They feel phenomenal. Estrogen's normal. So if you're taking these bigger shots, bigger boluses of sipkinate or whatever, your your estrogen is gonna gonna fly. Yes. Sky high for a couple of days, right? Well, here's the thing, Ron. There's so much variability. Every man is. You should see the variability. I got guys that come in on steroids, a gram a week or whatever. I check their estrogen. It's normal. But then I have a guy that comes in. He's on he's on 100, 200 milligrams sipinate a week, and, it's, and it's, I've seen estrogens as far as 1,000, 1,200, 1,600. We just talked about last week about Swami's friend who's a hot dog taster. He's got his <laughs> calcium score of zero. So, I mean, so typically, so that's why you, you got to work with the Gaussian curve. Yeah. you got to work on basic stuff, and then every man has to be fine-tuned. What, what else do I add? So aromatase inhibitors, very careful with those. HCG, I just answered the question. Yeah. We, you know, Clomid, we don't use Clomid. What else? So th those, am I missing anything, Ron? I what do we miss? I, from, from all our conversation, it seems like most of your patients are only on a TRT dose, and because they're older or whatever, they're on a statin. And they're not so, Ron, so, yeah. so again, Swami, long, your question was, you, you, your, your average Joe wants to protect his long-term health. Your long-term health is related to, to, to mitigating medical disease. So depending on the man... You could be colon cancer risk. You could be heart disease risk. Oh my God! You could be all these guys with kidney disease. There's all these different genetics. So color within the lines. I mean, be a good guy. Take take some tests. Te a little. Here's a secret. A little testosterone goes a long way, Ron. You know it's true. Yeah. I mean, if you want to stand on the stage and say you're going to be an IFBB pro, and I'm, I'm not putting people down. Right. If you want to be a pro, you want to bench all the big money. You want to have all these kind of Hey man, you're gonna. You're, it's not gonna be TRT. No. So, so Swami, you're you're the word soup is not. I don't even need word soup. A little test and address the individual medical conditions of the independent of the man. And you know what? Get a poodle, get a mountain bike, and have beer and drink some beer and have chicken wings, okay. like I do. I like vodka, but beers. Beer I mean, but, I mean, come on now. 
I love Swami. Thank God for Swami. Next one comes from Albertos. I think he's in Spain. It could be South America. Anyway, I always know high blood pressure is a silent killer. Mine was always lower than normal. Can that also cause problems? Sometimes I get dizzy, and I know it's due to lower pressure. And if I did not eat food for two, three hours after training, I'm shaking and feeling cold. My blood tests are always good. Iron and minerals are normal every time I check them. Also, a female friend of mine who was a doctor on ER told me that when she was taking her ECA pills, could not work properly because her hands were really shaky. I don't know what that's got to do with anything. Yeah, ephedra makes you shaky. But uh, I guess the real question here is low blood pressure. What are low the dangers of having low blood pressure? Okay, so pretty rare, but there are conditions that cause there are conditions that cause low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's called hypotension, hypertension, yeah. hypotension. So we don't see it much. I mean, you see it usually at secondary to other medicines that people are using, mm -hmm. or other medical conditions, and you don't see it in you don't see it in young healthy people. But again, there are conditions. There was some a big article in Time Magazine or something, or on one of my news feeds that was like some pretty rare but common cause of why people pass out, which is called syncope. Mm. And it was this, it was this, it was the hypo hypotension. So, so, so if you have that, sir, you need a good medical examination, history and physical, and then you need to go to what's called, and there's, there's a cardiologist specifically called an electrophysiologist, and, and that doctor will do heart tests and see if your heart is able to maintain pressures and if it's pumping. They put you on a, a table and they actually drop the table down. It's called a tilt table. Oh boy. This, is, this is real stuff, though. That's a real workup. So, so I mean, and, and, and I don't know why, you know, the female, the female ER doc and all this kind of. So, it, it, and then, but it, it may not be, he may not have really low blood pressure because people, a lot of women, what I used to see, obviously, as, as a general practitioner doctor, I'd see women, young women, 40s, 30s, and, and their blood pressure is 100 over 60. And, Doc, I know it's too low. No, it's not too low. That's just, are you dizzy? Do you have any symptoms? No. Well, then your blood pressure is not too low. I mean, so, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But if you're dizzy and you have symptoms, there's something wrong. Is it related to your blood pressure? Very straightforward. You see a good doctor, they sit you down, they stand you up, and they check the blood pressures. Hmm. And, and that's how you, and then you do blood work. Maybe it seems like this could be metabolic, like there's something more with your sugar, like hypoglycemia. I mean, though. when he talks about not eating for two, three hours after training, and you got to figure you're probably not eating for a couple hours before you train either. So that just sounds like hypoglycemia to me. Yeah, so, so this is hypoglycemia, not hypotension. Right. He needs a metabolic workup. There you go. Go see your own local metabolic doc. There was no word soup on that, was there, Ron? No. Okay, our last question comes to us all the way from Poland. Land of my forefathers. Darius Pivoworski. Hi, Doc. What do you think about high-fat, medium-protein, low-carb diet? And by fat, I mean mainly animal fats. It's supposed to be good for your heart unless you're going to mix it with carbs. High-fat diets. Where do you stand, this, Doc? This is it, Ron. We did it. I did the research today. Ron gave me this, and I did the research. So, because I everything has to be based on if we have real doubt. I want to be known as evidence-based doctor. So, there's it's called the Prospective Urban and Rural Epidemiological Study. It's called the Pure Study. Hmm. And there's some there was I forgot the name of the cardiologist, but he actually went to a conf, cardiology conference and he said all this stuff about his research, and they took it down off the internet. Ron, it's really, this is controversial stuff, guys. Boy. Here's the bottom line. So if you go back in history and time with the, medical, the American Medical Association and the American College of Cardiology in the 1950s and 60s, they put together data and they said high-fat diets lead to heart disease. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, just like the whole controversy of testosterone, you know, I love controversy. Mm -hmm. So it's true there was the data on that was perpetuated on shit science. It just wasn't really the, the, the type of data, statistical analyses, perspective, double-blinded. It really was not very good data. But there's something very in the gestalt, you know, in the visceral cavity, not, not no pun intended, that it just seemed like it made sense. Sure. So it, even to this day, despite being adequate data, they still, even though they're changing, we're going to go into it based on this big, huge landmark study that came out a couple years ago, and even recently, they're still kind of teasing it out. They've said that 
fat was the crucial. The, the, the macros, right, Ron? We have yeah. the macros. We have protein, fat, and we have protein, fat, carbohydrates. Right. And it was the 60% carbohydrates that people need, you know, the pyramid. And then that's, so this is what this guy's asking. The truth is that the data's come out now that fats aren't so bad because this trial show, now you could, sh you could shoot a lot of holes in this too. And in the end, I was reading all the, well, I, in the end, I kind of read the abstract and then I read, um, I read the criticisms by doctors mm -hmm. and it, it kind of tells me exactly like what was good, what was bad. So the studies, big study, and it showed that basically if you had a lot of carbohydrates, you were, you got, you got hurt, you had heart disease. Hmm. And yeah. so that's, that's what this guy's talking. So that carbohydrates are poison. There's no question, even without diabetes. And that's why I actually live on metformin and I'm not going to go any more and say any more than that. So inflam inflammation, carbohydrates, diabetes, pre-diabetes, Ron, it is, it's bad news. P carbohydrates are poison. Wow. But they, they were valuable 40,000 years ago, paleontologically to get us to the point where we are today because there was no 7-Elevens around. Hmm. We had to only, and this is all part of the paleontology that I was reading on, we only had to live to 25 or so to replicate, reproduce, and then it didn't matter. And we had no food, really. We had water, but we were all fighting and start, right? I mean, that's why there was no cancer or heart disease. Everyone was dead by age 30. Ron, it's true. You died from infectious disease or kuru kuru because they were cutting off your, your head. Up the, from the Viking land to, to down in South America. I mean, no one's going to argue. No one can argue it. And then comes, you know, turn of the century and 1900s. Heart disease is, is not really the number one killer. And now here we are today, heart disease. Why? Diabetes, obesity. No, this guy, you are right. Now, fats. The fat, there's, there's, I was reading about, I'm still kind of amazed. It, here's what the studies showed. The study showed it's it's kind of one of these exclusionary topics where they're not saying that fat doesn't cause heart disease because it can. Yeah. They're saying that there's no data to support that eating fat will kill you. It just it just so in the studies the people that ate the fat they just didn't have bad heart disease versus the people that had more carbohydrates. Hmm. So when you look at all the details of it, then you go to the fat. Then they talk about the polyunsaturated, the monounsaturated, the Mediterranean diet. Yeah. And that obviously, no one's going to argue that those are the best. But what this guy's getting to, and I've heard from cardiologists recently, is that even animal fats, go ahead and have the animal fats. It's go ahead, have pork, have steak. But now, but you know, then see, this, this is where I tried for the show and I couldn't come up with any of this. So here's my take on it. I couldn't show where I'm like, I'm thinking, really? We can really tell people ethically and all good with all good science that, hey, go to McDonald's tonight, take off the bun, have have that diet, you know, that, that's the, really the high protein diet, the fats, and just go nuts and you're not going to have heart disease. Your LDL will go up. I've seen it. Yeah. And I, I've seen people on the old paleo diet. Right. I mean, I've been doing this for so long that paleo kind of come, it's out of fashion now. But when remember when CrossFit, is paleo still in? I don't even well, know. My wife's a CrossFitter, and she's been on the paleo diet for some time now. So Still doing it. Still doing it. Well, so, more, well more you know, gluten, there's, a, there's a woman, and I've seen your wife. She's in good shape. So yeah. she's probably super healthy because she's just a healthy woman. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when it comes down, to, again, the genetics are everything on people. I mean, it's so important. Some people have such bad genes for heart disease. They do. They eat as well as they can, and they still end up getting heart I. I do calcium scores, Ron, on everyone. You should see the stuff that we're seeing. But it is true that the 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 the, the, the hypothesis of heart disease is shot when it comes to just cholesterol only. I agree with that. Okay. So just having bad cholesterol that that's gone now. But Ron, it supports what I talk about. It's multifactorial: hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol, smoking. Inflammatory inflammation, stress, bad genetics, you know, life just being older, and then the kit and caboodle, the moves line up. This is what I, I did a guy, did I tell you last week? I did a guy, his calcium score is 4,000. I mentioned yes. that, right? Yes. You know, he yeah. saw the doctor yesterday. I didn't, I, I didn't get the notes yet. I'm just so he saw that this is, again, another state. So he, I, I look forward to seeing what the doctor is going to do if he's going to go for an angiogram or it's just a stress test. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, and we already have him on statins and ACE inhibitors. So what are we going to do with this guy? His LDL is 55 already. So, so th there, there goes my my cholesterol. His LDL is low, but maybe his LDL is low only two years ago, and he should have had it low since he's 20. Hmm. I mean, so, so we don't. So fats. What else, Ron? Does that make sense well, to you, though? Yeah, I, w I want to ask you what was so controversial about that study that they had to take take the. Uh, oh my God! The report, I, the findings down. They they. Well, YouTube, I don't know if it was YouTube or someone, the American Heart Association, something happened where he was he was mentioning some preliminary fine. I mean, you know, Ron, the end of the day, which which I swear I'm always going to be in the face. That's why you're awesome. The truth of the matter is this is to help people. And unfortunately, there are biases. It's called money. Mm. And the truth of the matter is I, I, everyone's a little dirty. And the truth is there's a lot of money in heart disease, buddy. Mm. You really want to cure? Oh, boy, I'm. I'm wow. I, don't worry, I'm armed. So if I get yeah. shot walking out of here, I'm not. Sure. Someone's coming down with me. You know, let me tell you right now, huh. we don't know. And don't kid yourself. There's a lot of money out there, man, with pharmaceuticals. And if you really had a magic bullet, which there's not going to be one, yeah. but if you really did, it's going to help heal people. And that's what I'm going after. But there'll be there'll be ripple effects, won't there, Ron? So this, but just to be clear, this guy was advocating. From the findings of his large study, uh, a high fat, low carbohydrate diet to, yeah. uh, for heart health. To uh, he he said, Ron, he's saying it's the reciprocal. He's saying that there's no data to say that if you eat fat, you're going to have bad heart disease. Okay. Hmm. He, he's not saying it does. It's not going to happen, but it could happen. But he's saying that there's the the correlation for it, as far as randomized, double blinded, very good data. He said there's no smoking gun for it. Hmm. So it, it, he says the smoking gun, carbohydrates. Hmm. No, I mean, it, I, I, I had heard years ago that, you know, the food pyramid had this giant part of the pyramid was grains because the whole Midwest was farmlands. Funny. We needed, we needed to keep those uh, farms in business. And that's why the U.S. government was telling everyone they needed, like, there were three big servings of grains every day. Oh wow! And you've heard, you must have heard that, right? I did hear that. Yeah. I did. I've heard that and continue. I hear other things, even to this day. There's a big piece of the food, the Food and Drug Administration. Yeah, and I mean, this sounds like a. It sounds like we're we're hinting at a big conspiracy theory, maybe on, on the I don't know the the American Heart Association, the FDA, uh, Ron, uh, Big Pharma. I don't know who's on, who's in on this, but. Uh, it's scary. <laughs> but here, you know, here's my common sense. Yeah. Here's my common sense of it. It's a little bit of everything. Common sense. If you're gonna go have a steak at Morton's, which God, I would, I love that, of course. Yeah. And you're gonna have a grease, a grizzly, amazing porterhouse. I mean, there is other red meat can be toxic for other reasons. It appears like it increases colon cancer. Re people that eat more red meat have colon cancer, yeah. and they certainly have more disease, inflammatory disease. So. Certain, again, there's going to be genetics. Certain people, and you know that diet, eat for your blood type? Yeah. So there's something with this. And again, I'm not an expert in this. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just a, the doctor. I'm just the anabolic metabolic doc. So there's something going on where your fingerprint, and depending on what you eat, is going to have a lot of relations to how angry your body gets at what you're eating and causes inflammation. Now, inf and, and uh, there's no one's going to argue that when you cook things and you, when you burn things, it's called nitrosinase. You make these nitrate, nitrate amines. Yeah. Nitrate amines. Now, so if you have, if you have like no one, everyone knows that stomach cancer, in parts of Japan and other countries are up because they they charcoal again. Don't and don't get down on me and hate me if I'm if I'm using the wrong. I, I know that I know that that there, when you when you cook and you barbecue. That's pretty dangerous. That it tastes so good, though the grizzly, charcoal, but those are potentially very dangerous. And I, I'm not sure what the mechanism is. But again, it, it does something. It mediates in your your immune system response to it, and you get inflammation. Yeah. Any way that you get inflammatory anger in your body is destabilizing, mm. and will lead to heart disease, cancer. And just overall lack. And any of these studies, he talked about the longevity protocol, the longevity models, hmm. and that people that had fat, they lived. So why did they die? So he's just teasing out the data. And I, yeah, it seems like they kind of shut, shut him down. 
you know, a, a really basic premise. You know, paleo is, and gluten-free are kind of similar because neither one of them are. Gluten-free and paleo are two different things because paleo follows a few stricter rules as far as what you can't eat, but uh, they're both no grain. And a, a, a big reason a lot of people go gluten-free is because supposedly gluten has this tremendous inflammatory response inside the body. And people who go gluten-free, they'll say, nah, I don't have any joint pain anymore, my energy's yeah. up, and you know, all kinds of things that they'll report beneficial regarding going, uh, taking gluten out of their diet. So inflammation does seem to be whatever, whatever causes it. It's never a good thing inside the body, it sounds like. You know, so, so grains, it's so again, depends on who they are. And there, there's a company, I don't want to give a plug to the company, that they measure, they take your blood and they run it against, your. they, they, they check to see your white blood cell. Therefore, at least in vitro, the response of, to different food agents, and, and they're, they're looking for allergies, like how you respond. Yeah. And this is real science. But in the end, do you need to do that or just do an elimination diet? You know, just eat, you know, certain people have celiac, non-celiac. Some people live, so people know what they eat and how they feel. Yeah. And and not to mention, you could look at your blood pressure response. You could look at biorhythms. You could look at your cholesterol, your sugar levels. If you do all that together, I, I think one day I actually want to kind of do that in my clinic. Hmm. I, I'm just pretty gnarly. I'm the anabolic metabolic for today. Hmm. But if, if you did that, though, really person per person, this would be great, and then I'll pop the bubble. I'm going out to Morton's tonight. I don't know about you. <laughs> but Ron, I'm not going to Morton's, no. <laughs> Ron, Ron here's, the, here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I like to eat what I like to eat, and call me crazy. I try to do my best I can to not eat any of the bad stuff. I keep carbs to a down low as best I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I cut the carbs so low, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I feel horrible. I feel like garbage. Yeah. I can't train. I can't ride my bike. I can't lift weights. So there's a balance depending on what you're going to do in the next 12 hours or four hours. And then I try to keep carbs. And then I try to eat non-processed foods. Mm -hmm. I try to keep sodium down because I have a little hypertension. Yeah. And then, and then in the end, I try to keep. I just try to keep the saturated animal fats down. And I try to have fruits and vegetables. But Ron, in the end of the day, I fail every day on this stuff. <laughs> So you know what I do? No. I take a little metformin, I take a little statin, I take a little aspirin, and and um, I take a little lisinopril, a little ACE inhibitor. And, it's like, huh? It's like your plan B. But I mean, Ron, I mean, this is just my thought for how I should, I, I try to do the diet and exercise best I can. Right, right. And then, and then for the pieces that I fail, I bolster it and support it and with medicines that essentially provide me with protection yeah. sounds very reasonable to me and that's just and I and I tolerate them and I have a physician and different physicians that do it with me and we're always evolving and working on it and this is what I do for people of course they they're all men and most are on testosterone and in the end so it's probably true Ron that yeah. fats are not the culprit like we thought they were hmm. but carbs mm. but carbs oh Ron but then again carbs but I've seen people, I saw a patient of mine the other day who kind of heavy set and, and, and comes in with another person that there are two men together and, and we kind of look at the labs and how come he's like pre-diabetic and, and almost diabetic and the other guy, and he, he keeps carbs down and the other guy, about the same age, the other guy eats tons of carbs like a junkie and his A1C is 5.1 and his sugar is like in the 80s. Again, the answer to that is genetics. Gen genetics. It's just, gen it's just genetic. Hmm. All right. So well, there's variability in all this stuff, but I would not eat animal sat saturated animal fats. I would eat more the Mediterranean stuff. I think it's going to hold true, and I would keep the carbs down. Oh, and in that study, th yeah. there was some there was con there was confusion with some of the social. It was all around the world. It was a huge study, 170,000 people or some crazy. Wow. Thing. Yeah, big. And and there was. They, 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 were, they couldn't tease out some of the social economic stuff. You know, people obviously, unfortunately, with people that are lower social economic, yeah. they, they don't have some of the best behavior. And there was some smoking in there. So the guy really tore it apart and was saying, like, we don't even really know, but you can't say that fat causes this disease. Just can't say it. There's no smoking gun for it. Right. Hmm. That was it. That's it. Well, that's all our questions for this week, Doctor. 
appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time to get to all of them. And also, always got to say, I appreciate you doing the research and getting getting all the real data behind your answers because that's anybody could sit there and just speculate, but uh, you don't you don't do that. You're evidence based, fact fact based, and you got to do it. Yeah, I mean, when Doctor O'Connor answers your question, you can be confident. That's probably the uh, the most comprehensive answer you're going to get on a show like this. I do, and then, and then I throw in my own stuff that I learned called anecdotal, and that's where it gets fun. Right on. All right. Well, uh, best of luck with everything down in Fort Lauderdale. I know that's uh, that's that's a big deal, big 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 chunk of work for you right now. So appreciate you taking the time every week to still do this show, and uh, that'll do it. I want to remind everyone once again, Amazon.com or MetabolicDoc.com, AnabolicDoc.com. Pick up your copy of America on Steroids, It's Time to Heal. Check out his websites again, metabolicdoc.com, anabolicdoc.com. Go to the links on there for his social media and his YouTube channel. And he's got all kinds of videos that been coming out lately there. You need to check those out. So that's Thank it. you so much. Thank, thank you, Ron. And everybody out there, thank you for watching. Talk to you next time.